Hello and welcome to another one of the videos in the Junk Journal January series. My name is Jolene and I'm from Live Art Journaling and Self Development on Facebook. Uh, over the last month we have been putting together a junk journal and I thought it would be lovely um, to add some beads once we've finished this junk journal to have some lovely beads hanging off of it. One of the themes that we've been playing with in this junk journal right from the word go is the thought about rainbows and of new beginnings and certainly there's nothing more delicious than thinking about the cocoons of a butterfly and how all of that transformation happens inside it. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to construct our very own cocoons made out of threads and beads and a whole lot of patience. So those of you who have been following the uh, live workshops on Facebook will know that last week we constructed some uh, washi tape from eco dyed papers. And you'll know that I chose to use these A4 double sided sheets. And of course you end up with a lot of waste. I'm gonna be using that waste uh, cut off or, or peel off sheet as the basis for my beads. But you could also use plastic straws or indeed you can use the covers of magazines. You want something that's a little bit waterproof. I'm also gonna use a knitting needle, some white PVA school glue. Uh, sometimes you'll find this in your hardware store. A little bit of masking tape, a little tiny bit of water, and some threads uh, and also some micro beads. So I've got some lovely embroidery threads. I've also got a sewing thread uh, and of course you're going to see in a minute my micro beads as well. Um, do double check when you're using micro beads that you have got a sewing needle that will go through all of those beads. There's nothing more disappointing than arriving at, at sewing it and not being able to get them through the beads. The fabric that you're going to use, uh, you want to get a fabric that has got two qualities to it. One, that you can fray it at the edges and also that it is uh, breathable or like a gauze material. Um, you need it very lightweight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blend some water with my PVA glue. Now this is different of course for every single type of PVA glue. Uh, what you're looking for is a, um, a liquid that runs off of your paintbrush with ease. You don't want it too thin, you don't want it to, to a sort of milk uh, quality, but you do want it thin enough that it will run off of your uh, paintbrush with ease. So get yourself a plastic board uh, and get yourself either your straws or in this case this is my piece of paper that's from my um, uh, peel off uh, backing from my adhesive sheets and you want some pieces that are the width of the bead that you want to have. Now mine work out about two inches long so however wide you want it and a, a rectangle. You're going to wrap that rectangle and you, as I said, you can use the front covers of magazines. They are also quite uh, waterproof um, and it's a good way to recycle, of course. So I wrap this around my knitting needle or perhaps you could use a pencil or you could use the end of a paintbrush. I wrap it round, then I let go of it a little bit so that it uncoils and then I tack it down with some masking tape. And this is going to create my little tubes. These will be the center point for my beads. Giving it this uh, waterproof uh, paper just gives these beads a little bit more substance to them and means they're not so flimsy. I do know that there are lots of ways of producing these cocoon beads. You can find tutorials all over the place. This is my version. They are all equally as good as each other. Okay, so let's get hold of our material and I want you to cut it into strips. 
Now, they need to be not too wide, actually. We're gonna run them up and down the length of this bead and we want them to sort of um, create a, a domed effect. You'll see what I mean when I come to it. So probably no wider than about, oh, I don't know, a centimeter and a half or so. And you don't have to have long lengths, you can have some short lengths. So I'm showing you here, I've got one long length, which is that greeny piece. And then I've got this pink piece that I'm gonna cut into two strips. Now, if you haven't seen already on my Etsy page, I'll put the link below, you can buy bling bags uh, from me. And this fabric actually comes from one of the bling bags. The fabric within the bling bag is all recycled Indian textile uh, cloth, um, which you can buy and you get over 200 grams worth in a pack. So if you do want one, uh, just send me a message on Etsy and, and we can make one up for you. So what you're going to do is get your glue um, liquid and you're going to paint uh, down your fabric. And this is why you need a bit of a plastic board underneath you. Um, so just kind of painting that full length of that uh, fabric. And this is why it needs to be lightweight and also a kind of thin gauzy material because if it's too thick and too heavy, it's not gonna stick to itself. Uh, you're certainly not going to be able to sew through it later on, it'll be far too thick and we want it to dry quite quickly. Now then, the bonus of being able to pop this piece of paper onto the needle is that you can turn it rather than you having to turn your hand. And we start off with the fabric in the middle of the paper and we corkscrew it right to the end so that it goes over the end of the paper and then you corkscrew it all the way back so that it overlaps the other end. And then you continue going back up the bead, arriving at just beyond the midway point, and then back down again. And never sort of going back to the end. So what we're doing, in fact, is creating a dome in the middle. It'll be thicker in the dome in the middle than at either end. I do apologize for the light in this video. We, we actually had a sunny day, which has been very rare recently. So the, the lighting on this video gets very bright and then not. So once you've covered with fabric, the length of your bead, you're gonna get your brush and a little bit of glue on it again, and just paint the whole thing so that it's all solid, all the ends are tucked in. I'm gonna show you now how to do it with the two uh, slightly shorter lengths. We just do exactly the same thing. So you paint the full length of your fabric, of your gauze. You start in the middle of the bead and you wrap um, your uh, fabric up to the end of the bead, turning the actual plastic rather than trying to keep lifting your hand up and over. That's the bonus of having that plastic on that knitting needle. So here I go, I'm gonna roll that up just beyond the end of the paper and then come back down again, just beyond the paper at the other end. And then what I'm gonna do is once I run out of um, cloth, I'm just gonna paint the other cloth with the glue substance and I'm gonna begin where I left off. Perhaps now is a really good time to say if you haven't found your way to the Facebook group that I facilitate alongside Lucy, um, the link is in the description below. You are very welcome. Uh, we have two live workshops a week uh, and one very, very amazing summer school. Um, there's nothing you need to do. You just need to join the Facebook group and uh, we'll be there. The live workshops are stored in the unit section. And of course, now and then we pop up a little YouTube video to accompany the work we've been doing. So here we go. So I've got my two beads on my uh, knitting needle. I'm gonna paint them with a little bit of glue just to tuck any ends down. And then what I actually do is I, I uh, hoik them off that needle and I pop them onto the top of my radiator just to fully dry off. And I'd leave them for a good couple of hours, really let them dry nice and solid. Okay, so here's my bead. Uh, when you take them off, you're gonna feel they're really lovely and solid, very crisp, and that's exactly how we want them. 
and I'm going to warn you now that this all gets a bit fiddly and a bit faffy and certainly the first time you do it you may be swearing as you do it but I promise you you're going to love the results. So I've got a bit of embroidery thread here which I'm tying a double knot in one end and I'm going to take a uh, embroidery needle, a nice sharp one and we're going to start in one end. Now here you can see on this bead I actually missed one end of the paper but it, it doesn't matter. So I put, pop my needle in about a centimetre down the inside of my tube and I'm going to cut that little thread off um, at the end of the, the knot just so that it doesn't get in the way. And we're going to do a blanket stitch all the way round the bead and on the first stitch only you're going to put your needle back in and then where that loop is of thread that you have left over as the needle goes in you're going to put your uh, needle you're going to wrap it around that loop twice and that means that your knot will be right at the top of the bead so right at that end corner so then you put your needle in you pull it through a little bit then you'll have a loop obviously where the thread has gone through put your needle through the thread and pull and your knot must end at the top of the bead and you keep doing that all the way round until you get right back round to the beginning and then we're going to go round again but this time where we're making the stitch is in between the stitches that are already there I'm going to let you watch me doing the stitching so for those of you who are slightly more nervous about doing stitching blanket stitch really isn't complicated you just put the needle in allow there to be a loop and thread your needle through the loop Okay, so once you've arrived back at the beginning, you're going to, when you put your needle back in the next time, it's going to go in between those two sections and slightly higher up. It's quite fun actually to have some very long stitches and then some short stitches in between. It just adds to the design of the bead. Of course, if you really don't want to do this stitch, there is nothing stopping you perhaps painting the ends or um, perhaps you just want to stick some more tape over the ends or you could even sort of paint that with a little bit more um, glue so that it all stabilizes it. I just personally think it is really worth the effort uh, sitting down, perhaps while you're watching the telly or uh, perhaps while the baby is sleeping, just sitting down and, and um, sewing these down. Once you get to the end, we're going to do a double knot. You just push your thread, push your needle back into the thread that you have, um, the stitches that you've created, just making sure just to catch one stitch in the needle. Um, create your loop as we have been and wrap your needle twice through the loop. So there we go, once and a second time and pull nice and tight and then you can cut the thread off right as close to the knot as you want and that will secure it. Um, those of you who are worried about coming it coming undone just pop a little bit of your glue solution on it and allow it to dry and that will keep it nice and secure. So of course you're going to do that to both ends of your beads. Ta-da! All done! Okay, so now let's create um, the pizzazz of this bead. And what you're going to do for that is you're going to grab your lengths of fabric again, any bits and pieces that you've got left over. Uh, you might also have some fun yarns in your stash. 
um, you might be a seamstress and you might have loads of ends of cotton that you've got left over anything like that you want the fragments and the frays and we're going to construct a nest a nest of threads um, now for those of you who have ever shredded fabric before you'll know uh, as you shred fabric as you sort of cut it and then um, shred the two parts apart you always end up with these fibers in between and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling those all off as we go so either using your uh, fingers or you'll see later on when I'm doing this, I'll use a pair of tweezers. You literally um, pull apart those threads. And that's another reason why this needs to be gauzy type material. So you can start collecting all that. So I'll pop a piece of white paper down and you can see as I build this nest of yarns, uh, like, a, like a mummy bird waiting for her new creation to be formed. So here's my little nest of fibres and fabrics and ends and tattered strings and bits that people don't really think look that beautiful until you pull them all together. And so now what we're going to do is mess them all up. Um, we're literally weaving them, I guess, with our fingers. Um, so just pulling those strands. Um, blending all those colors up and you're going to make um, a sort of long um, ribbony type length uh, you don't need to be too specific about this at all and that's going to be the first sort of bulky layer of our bead we're going to wrap that around the bead and luckily because it all is sort of tattered ends and frayed bits it will sort of stick to itself I'm also going to grab a length of, uh, this is actually quite a wide embroidery yarn, it's a shiny wide embroidery yarn. You could use a bit of ribbon, you could use a bit of thread, um, you know, you could even use a very thin strip of the fabric that you've already used. So there you go, I wrap my nest around my bead and then I take this length of embroidery yarn and I'm going to make a um, cross hatch of it. So I start in the middle, I go diagonally to the right, round to the bottom, and then I wrap around again, right the way down to the other end, and I'm going to secure that with a pin just for a bit until I can sew that down. So I secure that with a pin and I cut the end off. Okay, just when you thought it couldn't get more fiddly. <laughs> You need to thread now your fine needle. So this is the needle that you're going to use to do your seed beads or your tiny beads. And thread it 
and use it to start off with to sew that embroidery floss or ribbon or whatever you've done that corsetry work with use it to just secure that down firmly so just a few stitches on it to make sure that that's there and then take that needle and thread just by sewing it through the top layer of your bead you really don't need to go through the paper and everything just that top layer sew it so that your bead and your thread work starts from where the bottom of your embroidery threads uh, began so you can, it's probably easier if you look at the video more than listen to my words here so literally your uh, end of your thread so where your beads are going to end up begins at where the beginning of your embroidery thread where that uh, blanket stitch began and you're going to start threading your seed beads and this is why it's really important that you get yourself a needle that can cope with doing seed beads um, and you uh, sew and uh, thread uh, beads onto your needle until it is two times at least two times the length of your bead and then what you're going to do is you're going to wrap that length of beads uh, seed beads around your bead like a corkscrew holding can you see in my right hand there I'm holding very close to where the ends of those beads are I take my uh, pin out at this point because I've obviously stitched that down, tacked that down with my um, thread earlier. So I'm wrapping that round and round like a corkscrew from one end to the other and once I get to where the ends of the bead is, I find out where that's going to be and I immediately pop my needle into the bead, into the surface of the bead and just do a little tiny stitch so that it anchors my thread. I promise you, if you watch alongside listening, you will get it. So once I've done that, my thread and my little seed beads are now fully secure and I can start sewing them down so they don't wobble around. I put my needle to the right hand side of my beads and I sew then so that the needle comes out at the left hand side of my beads. And then when I pull my thread, it's gonna anchor those beads down. Now there are so many times where I've taught this particular project and I've seen people trying to push their uh, seed uh, needle all the way through their bead and you really don't need to. If you think about it, we've got a couple of layers of cloth on top of our paper and we've also got all that mesh, though, that nest of fibres on top and then we've got that embroidery floss. So you only really need to go through that top surface. We're just securing the beads down so they don't wobble up and down. So be patient with yourself. If um, pulling the needle through the fabric gets tough, it might do because you're using a very fine needle, just use a pair of tweezers to yank it out the other side and uh, you know avoid having to use fingers One thing that I know right away is that some of you watching this project will give this a go and get terribly frustrated and uh, I want you to know that that frustration is just your mind's way of learning something new. It's absolutely okay to give something new a go and that maybe the first couple of times it won't work but it will certainly work after a few goes and a little bit of patience. So I'm just going to secure this off uh, in exactly the same way actually as we did with our embroidery thread right at the beginning. I'm going to pull that needle through, make a little loop, uh, allow my needle to travel round that loop twice and pull it nice and tight. And then what I like to do is just put a little false stitch uh, into my bead which literally involves putting the needle in, uh, pulling it out right in the middle of the bead and then cutting the thread right close to the um, bead that just means really that that thread gets lost somewhere in the nest of all those fibers and there's your bead 
You have done an absolutely brilliant job. I would love to see the beads that you construct. We will be using these on our journal. So if you're part of the Facebook group, um, we will certainly be popping these on our journals right at the end. If you have made them, please do share. And if you're watching this uh, video right now and you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do. It just means that you will get a notification every single time we put a new video up. You have been amazing and I wish you today and tomorrow a brilliant sunshiny day.